Hi, and welcome to week two, module two, of our university certificate in police leadership. And this week, we're going to be discussing police leadership in terms of the mind and emotion of a police leader. We want to recognize how mental models guide your behavior and relationships in policing. Uh, we want to talk about how to engage in independent thinking by staying mentally alert, thinking critically, and being mindful rather than mindless as a police leader. We saw the importance of this as described by the World Economic Forum in terms of Industry 4.0 in a VUCA environment last week when we discussed that. And then we want to try to break out of categorized thinking patterns and open our minds to new ideas and multiple perspectives as a, as a police leader to strengthen and enhance our leadership capacity. We also want to apply systems thinking, which I think is so vital. Uh, the police organization is a complex, adaptive system. It's complex because it's made up of many parts. It's adaptive because it's continually changing, both from external and internal environmental factors. And it's a system because it was designed to accomplish a purpose. And so it works together as a system to accomplish that purpose. And so you want to apply systems thinking. You also want to exercise this incredibly challenging domain of emotional intelligence uh, in your police leadership. And you want to be self-aware. And I know that a number of officers have commented on the importance of self-awareness in police leadership. And certainly, as we move into Industry 4.0, this has been highlighted as one of the key skill sets of good leadership in the 21st century. We also want to look at uh, this notion of displaying empathy and managing relationships in our police leadership. As I've highlighted in other sections, leadership looks at task and relationship. Uh, we have a task to perform as leaders, but we can only accomplish that through people. And that's why relationship becomes so vital. And that's why we need to manage our emotions, display empathy, and manage our relationships well within police leadership. It's no longer simply a transactional environment where you're being paid to do this kind of in an in a almost militaristic way. But now we want to realize people are motivated by far more than just uh, the transactions that occur in, in their world. And then we want to apply the difference between motivating others based on fear, the old motif of leadership, and motivating others based on love. And this is really quite a controversial idea, but... Daft in the textbook says that great leaders love the people that they're leading. And I think he's onto something. People are not a means to an end. People are the end. And so we realize as leaders that we cannot do much without relationships and without people. And so we want to lead not only with our head, but also with our heart. But we want to make sure there's a balance between those. We can't just lead with our hearts and we can't just lead with our heads. We need both. And so whole leaders use both head and heart. They use, I really like the way Daft, Daft uh, segregates these. They use their heads for organizational issues. Fantastic. And they use their hearts for human issues. I think that's just such a great distinction that, we can, that helps us to think it through. If this is an organizational issue, I must use my head. But if it's a human issue, I need to also then invoke my heart. Emotional intelligence, empathy, human understanding. And so I want, as I look at the current issues, how do I give people a sense of meaning and purpose within DRPS? How do I help those whom I'm leading understand that what they're doing is pivotally important to the strength of our society and that every uh, officer within the organization has a key role to play in accomplishing the vision of a safe community in which to live, work, and play, and that they're so pivotal in that? How do we give them a sense of meaning, sense-making uh, through our leadership? How do we make employees feel valued and respected within DRPS, within the Durham Regional Police Service? How do I keep morale and motivation high? And these are huge, huge questions within the 21st century, especially within policing, within DRPS. How do I keep those two high? So one of the things we want to think about as we think about leading with our head and with our heart is this idea of mental models, my worldview. And as you know, when we look at people, so often we only see the tip of the iceberg, right? Their actions. What we don't see 
below the waterline is their beliefs, their values, and their attitudes. And so we judge their actions. And we ourselves act based upon these theories that we hold about specific systems in the world and the expected behavior that should occur from those. Our beliefs, values, attitudes which lead to our actions. Those are our mental models. The way we view the world, the way we interpret what is coming at us is based upon our beliefs, values, attitudes which produces our actions. So Daft in the textbook has this picture of a system and he says, would your mental model enable you to effectively complete the system so that this light would work? Would your mental model enable you to effectively complete the system so that you could then have a whole system that was working for the purpose for which it was designed? And of course, that's a very simple illustration of how we need to work within an organization. So a system is any set of elements that interact to form a whole and produce a specified outcome. Systems are designed to produce a specified outcome, as I said earlier. And a mental model then helps leaders attain the desired outcome by arranging the key elements in the system, right? So your mental model, when you look at the system, says this is how I need to arrange the system, this is how I need to lead, to accomplish this outcome as a police leader. Google has uh, a mental map for its leadership. And number one, they say, we, in your mindset, we want you to stay uncomfortable. Your mental model, we want you always to be not at comfort with the status quo. Second thing we want you to do is allow failure to coexist with triumph. Because often we can't move forward without failure. We want to use less management, um, less command and control, and much more leadership, vision, change, risk. Uh, we want you to defy convention, and where the mental maps of most people says we need to stay within convention, Google calls upon its leadership to defy convention. And then this idea of agility, moving fast and figuring things out as you go. And so that's there mental model. What would your mental model and what would the leadership's uh, mental model of DRPS look like? How would you situate those? We also have assumptions which are part of our mental model about events, about situations and circumstances. But we need to realize this is where critical thinking becomes so vital as we look at stereotyping, as we look at bandwagoning, as we look at getting uh, information that confirms our biases. We need to be really aware of that Assumptions are dangerous if they're accepted as truth. This is my assumption, but is my assumption true? I need to assess it based upon the evidence rather than just my worldview. So I have to question assumptions. And this can help me shift my mental models. Leaders' mindset is key in an organization's success. The greatest factor in success of leaders and organizations is the ability to expand or change your mental model. The organization, notice this, is highly vulnerable if the leader's mental model is obsolete. Is my mental model attuned with industry 4.0? Is my mental model attuned with volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity? Is my mental model aware of a globalized arena, but a local application of that? Policing, as we seek to move, this is especially a challenge in policing, as we seek to move from the three R's of policing to the three T's, which was highlighted by the Canada Chiefs of Police. And I'll take the last minute and a half to show this to you. So the primary function of policing has remained consistent. The primary function of policing, the system of policing exists to ensure the safety and security of all persons and property. That has not changed. That has remained the same. Police leaders and managers increasingly face this question. How can we provide quality service in the light of more complex demands, VUCA, while being sensitive to the resource and economic constraints that abound in our world today. The pressure in making these decisions increases because politicians, municipal staff, and ultimately the public scrutinizes the decisions that you as police leadership make. So key tenets of the, we want to make decisions then based upon evidence and the key tenets of evidence-based decision-making 
are here evidence, research, sound information, and effective critical thinking. And this is where we see them. the mental shift that has to occur. Is our mental model archaic or has it moved into the 21st century? And here's where we see in 1975 the three R's of effective policing were random patrol, rapid response, and reactive investigation. But the three R's have now given way to the three T's. Targeting, conducting good research to target scarce resources on predictable concentrations of harm. Testing, review or conduct tests of police methods to help them choose what works best. And so this idea of experimentation at the margins and testing uh, what we found in our research. Does, the research says this, but does it actually work contextually? And then tracking, generating and using internal evidence to track the daily delivery and effects of those practices, including we must track also public perceptions of police legitimacy. So the three R's have given away to the three T's. And this, when you look at it, becomes our mental model for policing in a VUCA environment in the 21st century. I, I use this example of how police services can now map hotspots and they can target and test. And you can look that up. I, I even uh, have the article there. I just wanted to highlight as well the Chiefs of Police decision-making model in terms of the three T's, this new mental model to policing, which has replaced the three R's, you begin with the theory or issue and you move your way around until you come out to reflecting on your results. And you can take a look at that. We can talk more about that if you would like to. Um, and so policing then has to adopt a different mindset, a global mindset. And you can, you can read through that. I want to finish off with this. How do you as a police leader then develop this new mindset that shifts from the three R's to the three T's? Number one, you want to cultivate independent thinking, both in yourself and in those you lead. Um, a good friend of mine asked the question, do you want um, people to have uh, the ability to challenge your thinking in a good way, or do you want them just to acquiesce? And I think it's really vital in this new world that we, we enhance and encourage independent thinking. We also want to develop open-mindedness. The ability to challenge our assumptions, the ability to challenge our worldview, the ability to allow information to impact that. We also want to move into much more of a systems thinking mode to begin to see the organization as a complex adaptive system that is part of a bigger system called society and how those two interact. And then we want personal mastery. I, I know it says personnel mastery, but I think it means personal mastery. We really work hard on developing who we are as leaders in terms of our competence, character, and credibility. Thanks so much.